All right, we're, we're ready to ink up these plates. I wanna to talk to you a little bit about some pre-prep that I've already done. I've already diluted the magenta ink down and uh, rolled it out. So I had it laid on here and I made sure that I rolled it out at least as big as my six by eight design area is. I also went ahead and prepared a yellow plate. So this one I rolled out full strength. You can see it's a little bit more opaque which makes me think I probably should print this one first because I don't want to obscure too much of the details of the other colors. So this one is the most intense um, density of ink. So that's our yellow plate. And then I'll talk you through just prepping the blue plate. I think um, I want to have maybe two parts. Well, I'm debating. My, my pink is so transparent. I think the blue should also be pretty transparent. So what I'll plan to do is use maybe equal parts, trans transparent base, and the cyan blue so we'll just kind of estimate quantities here and then with the blue again just a little dab the blue seems quite a bit thicker than the red for some reason so i think i'm gonna maybe err on the side of having more transparent base than blue ink and then before i roll it out remember to mix it as thoroughly as you can just using the card scrap or your palette knife so that it's not streaky kind of mix it into a consistent and then spread it out a little bit so that you're not splattering ink all over the place when you go to roll it up. All right, so we've got and my roller here. You can see how transparent that is already, even though it's fairly thick here on the inking slab. If you find that these colors are just a little too washed out, you could always go back and print the plate again with a more intense color, but I think I'd rather have you um, keep the colors pretty transparent to start with. So I've taped down, this is my final um, clear plate here, I've taped it down following my black outline on my um, template. And I've also marked on each one of the plates where the lower right corner is going to be. Um, you can put a tape piece of tape there if you want to but it's nice to know that you're going to be laying it down the right way each time and it might even be good to know which side is up and down in case you've got them sitting around um, you don't want to accidentally set the wet side down on anything so those little um, aids help me make fewer mistakes so I've got a pretty transparent blue here I'm going to roll it out and make that layer as consistent as I can so that it doesn't show the streaks of the roller. You might need to go over it a few times, make sure it's not too thick. Again, we can add more layers later if we need to, but if you overdo the ink, it may ooze through the paper, especially the thin washi paper. You could also try printing these on the heavier weight Canson Edition paper. Um, you might have better luck with that if you dampen it slightly before you print it, but that paper is much more durable. It can withstand more uh, heavy layers of ink, slightly heavier layers of ink. It's still sometimes um, you get those oily rings if you put too much of the Akua Intellio on there. And so this seems pretty sheer, but let's see. It might end up being a little bit more pastel than I expect, but we'll go ahead and try this too. I just want to make sure that the blue and the red don't overwhelm our yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of clear these things out of the way so we have a little bit more room to show you how we're doing the selective inking. And um, I'm gonna get this, get a little bit of ink here too. I don't wanna set anything in transparent base. Okay, so I'll just set the roller out of the way for now. We'll clean that up in a little bit. Get the inks back out of the way. All right, so I think I'm still planning to use my little template to keep the borders clean. I found that I kept, um, forgetting it was on the plate because it was transparent so I jazzed it up a little bit so I was less likely to forget that it's there on the plate and, and ink right over it. Um, hopefully this will help me make fewer mistakes there too. So I'm going to go ahead and position this on here. The other option if you don't want to use one of these um, borders is to just carefully wipe this away but I think this might help me because we're moving the plate so many times we're going to have three different plates in there and I'm hoping that this system taped to our backing board is going to be a little bit more accurate than just sort of estimating and wiping away with a rag. So I'll tape that on and I'll leave this on for the whole 
course of the printing process, assuming I don't forget and um, somehow ink right over it again. So we line that up. I'm going to tape it down with some artist tape so that we can hinge it out of the way, flip it out of the way when we don't need it. So I can feel the edge of it. Everything is um, transparent here, so I've got to rely on touch as much as sight. <laughs> A little bit more artist tape at the bottom edge here. All right, so we'll leave that on while we're burnishing the paper. Um, actually, I want to do some wiping before I get that in place, but we've got it where we need where it needs to be. So right now, I'll just kind of carefully flap it out of the way, leave it hinged on there, and um, now we're going to be looking at our sketch to figure out which areas need to be removed on each plate. So we want the blue to stay in the background. I think, um, as I went back and looked at the sketch, I think I'm going to try to get a little bit more variation in the background, so I want to leave a little bit heavier layer of blue ink in the background at the top, wipe a little bit more of it away in the background down here, and I'll leave the red a little bit denser in the middle and do a little more wiping, just so that there's a little more color variation in the background. We'll still have all three colors mixing, but I'm going to try to have them mix in different proportions so that the, the neutral colors are a little bit varied in the background and not um, quite so... Um, similar all over the place. So we know this balloon needs to be white. I'm going to leave a little bit of the blue on there to kind of act as a shadow, but um, maybe I'll use a paper towel for part of this. So I want to, um, again, kind of watch where your fingers go. Since our plates are large enough, we can um, keep our fingers out here to hold it. I have taped the blue plate down to my registration jig so that it doesn't shift around as I'm doing this. So Let's start with the white balloon, and I'll just sort of, again, I want to leave a little bit of the blue in there to kind of suggest some shadow on it, but um, I'll completely wipe it away. And then maybe find a little bright highlight in there somewhere, so there's a white, brighter light source there. And then maybe lift out the... A little bit of the blue there. We know we're going to need the blue to be lifted away where the yellow balloon is. I think I may have better luck with a piece of t-shirt scrap. It tends to wrap around your finger a little bit better than the paper towel does. So I want to leave this balloon un untouched, but we want to lift out um, yeah, I think this through a little more carefully. Um, I'll lift out. I don't want any blue to print where the red flag is, but I do want it to print on that balloon, so I don't want to accidentally wipe through that one. And um, we're going to actually lift this whole yellow shape out up here and the red one. We don't want blue to print there. Although we could leave a little bit of shadow printing on the red balloon too just to make it feel like there's a little shadow on the bottom of that part as well. So um, and the yellow balloon. Okay, I'm trying not to accidentally wipe away with the blue balloons this time. If you find that your finger is too fat to fit into these little tiny shapes that you need, you could wrap the t-shirt around um, the tip of a pencil or a skewer, something that's quite a bit finer if you really want to be uh, precise. I'm going to kind of keep this moving pretty fast, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time fussing with this, but you'd get the idea if you wanted to have a little more precision. And um, on the blue balloon, if I want any um, highlights on it, I could lift that out too. So let's say I just want a little bit of a shine on that blue balloon so it's not quite so flat. I could lift out a little bit of light there as well. Okay, and um, I haven't decided what color I want this stick to be. I think for now I'll lift it out of the blue plate. Maybe leave a little bit of shadow on the blue there. And 
I want to wipe more of the background away down here so that the blue stands out from the background a little bit better. I'll put my head in front of the camera. I'm afraid. So I'm going to lift a little bit more of the background here so that um, a little bit more painterly, less flat colors. Somewhat darker to the sky up here. So leave the blue there. All right. Yeah. Well, I think I'm going to, I, I forgot that I wanted to print the yellow plate first. So instead of inking this, I'm going to set it aside. Um, I should have waited to even make that one, but I th hopefully I can get it back in the right spot. So let's let's get the yellow plate in there first. I just didn't want the yellow to cover up the other colors, so we'll put it down first. We'll tape it down as well, so it's not shifting around too much. And now for the yellow, we want to keep the yellow. We're going to wipe it away where the red balloon is. It's a little bit harder to see through this because the ink is so much thicker on this plate, but luckily it's a light value, so lift out the red balloon. I'm just using a baby wipe on this one. And You might even use the um, end of an eraser for these little tiny marks. I'm hoping I don't get too far off there. So remove the red balloon. Um, we want to lift out the white balloon again on the, yellow, on the yellow plate so that we don't get too much yellow in there. Is still on there, it's not a big deal. For the um, little end here, I think I might use an even smaller. It's a little too fine of a mark. Let me see if using the side squeeze a little better. Okay. We need to lift the yellow off the bottom part of the blue balloon. I will scrape out the stick on the yellow plate since we'll have a heavy yellow background here at the bottom. Okay, so the yellow balloon stays yellow. If um, I want to kind of work through the shape at the where the knot in the balloon is, I need to clean that up a little bit now. I'm using a the map board would work better than that skewer. Okay. 
All right, what am I forgetting? Okay, so I do want to leave the yellow pretty heavy in the bottom, but then I want to lift off some of that yellow in the top so that it's not, um, so the yellow balloon stands out from the background a little bit more in those areas. So I'll leave a little residue of the yellow, but um, leave quite a bit of it away. leave that heavier at the bottom. So we've got our yellow plate. I mean, there's some stuff up here. Probably will get covered by the border, but just to be safe. Okay, make sure I'm not missing anything. Oh, if I want uh, any highlights on the yellow balloon, I should also lift those out. Um, now, so just that. Okay. And let's go ahead and print the yellow plate. So I'm going to put down my ink barrier. Otherwise, be sure to wipe that up before you get your printing paper on there. So that should protect um, our printing paper from getting dirty on the borders. We're going to leave this printing paper attached throughout the process of printing this image. So you want to um, tape it down so that you don't have to try to get it back in the exact same spot next time. And this is delicate paper, so please be gentle with it. I'm hoping I don't tear mine. We're going to be rubbing it quite a bit, so we want to make sure that we're fairly gentle with it. Okay, let me tape down that top edge so that in between changing plates, we can lift that carefully out of the way. Um, I'm going to pause while I do the burnishing and then we'll pull the yellow plate out and we'll put in the next plate. Okay, I've burnished this quite a bit. We're ready to pull off the buffer paper and peel back the print. If you see any spots that you missed, now would be the time to put it back down and do a little bit more burnishing, but it looks like we got most of the spaces that we needed. I'm going to get ink up here. I need to move out of the way keep my paper clean. So I'm just going to flip that out of the way, leave it attached by the hinges. Let's flip this out of the way. This is the part I always forget, <laughs> is getting this um, little border out of my way before I bring in the next plate. And then we remove the yellow plate and we'll replace it with the next color plate. So I think I'll do the magenta second. And I'll just set this one off on the floor there while we're doing the next one. Alright, so this one again we'll tape down so it doesn't shift around while we're doing the wiping and printing. Now for the red plate, I'm thinking we want to definitely keep this balloon in the top corner and I'd like to keep the background a little darker pink in the middle, but for this part, I do want to kind of lift it out so that the red balloon stands out a little bit more brightly. And um, I'm going to wipe around that part. The white balloon completely gets lifted out. Leave just a tiny bit of residue on there to kind of suggest a little bit of volume. And um, I think actually, maybe I'll go a little bit of difference between the background and this part of the. Balloons. 
so that we can see it. I'm going to just shift the dark part a little bit lower, I think, so that we can... And I do need to lift that yellow balloon out, but we can get like that. So, um, then lighten this red a little bit here so that the yellow balloon doesn't get completely lost in that dark shade. I won't, I won't completely remove it, but I, I want it to be and that a little bit better. In the middle here, I do need to wipe it out completely because it's nice and bright yellow. And I'll do the same thing here at this end so we can kind of see where that shape of the balloon was, but not completely remove the red there because I do want it to mix a little bit with the balloon. So we move the blue balloon here. Some of the red away from the top here, so it's not quite as purpley there when it mixes with the blue and some of the colors. And then a little bit, a little bit more intense pink through the middle there. And then at the very bottom, I want to lighten this too, so that more of the yellow shows through in the blue here at the bottom. I think. So I just want to double check. We'll have the red kept there for the red balloon, the red flag. The flag is going to mix with the blue a little bit there. I might um, blot it a tiny bit so that more of the blue can show through there. And um, I was thinking I might leave a little bit of red on this, this blue balloon to create a tiny bit of variation there on the shadow side. a little bit finicky work, but um, take your time and do a nice job. All right, I think we're good to go on the red plate. So let me get my hands cleaned off real quick with a baby wipe since I've been um, putting ink on it. And um, any last minute corrections, now's the time. Make adjustments there. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll put our protective border back on there. You don't want to wipe it away by hand. I'll drop the paper back on there. Gently, gently. Get your burnishing sheet on to protect it. And then I'll pause again. Um, I'll do a tiny bit of burnishing, but um, just show you what I'm doing. I'm holding the paper as smooth as I can so that I'm not introducing any wrinkles. And I'm using a pretty gentle touch, but um, still fairly firm. I'm not digging in where I might rip the paper again, but um, 
I do want to make sure that I'm covering every square centimeter several times in different directions. So I'll keep working on this for two or three minutes and I'll um, come back and we'll finish it up. Okay, I've already burnished it for a couple of more minutes on the red plate. We'll take the buffer sheet out of the way and take a peek here. So the colors are starting to mix now. We've got our yellow and our magenta on there and the image is starting to um, show up. We're going to peel our stencil out of the way carefully and then remove the red plate. Set it aside to clean a little bit later. And we'll bring in our blue plate, which we've already wiped this one, so it should go a little bit faster now. Okay, and I've got to line this up as closely as I can with the actual shape so that we don't... Looks pretty good. I'm going to do a little bit more... Um, it seems like the shape's off a little bit here, so I'm just going to kind of clean those edges up a little bit more. So I want to take the plate down in a couple of spots. It doesn't shift around while we're rubbing. Put our stencil edge back on to protect the image from getting ink in its borders. And then bring our paper back down gently. You see the blue shine through there now. And you can see the paper is getting saturated with ink, so it's even more important to get a buffer sheet on there, make sure it's not um, coming through. And use a pretty gentle touch. The paper is getting weaker as more and more ink um, makes it oily. So I'll start with my fingers gently, and then I'll come back over with the <clears throat> spoon for another couple of minutes, and then we'll take a peek and see how it looks. Okay, I've finished burnishing the blue plate. We'll peel off the parchment paper. And wow, we can see a lot of color coming through even from the back side. But let's gently remove it and see how we've, how we've got. Um, yeah, I think, I'm, you know, we could add black to this, but I think it's working fairly well already, reading as a distinct image. So let me kind of flip this over and um, show you what we've got. So, of course, it's backwards. It's always going to be backwards, but we were able to get some bright yellow, some bright red, some pure blue, and then we've got the secondary colors, green, uh, a little bit of orange here, violet, where the flag overlaps the blue balloon. And then in the background, we've got a whole variety of colors where the primary colors mixed in varying proportions. So it's a little more painterly back there. If you felt like it needed a little bit more clarity, uh, you know, you might be able to go in at the end with a little bit of hand drawing. I would, I would kind of be careful on this real thin paper about hand drawing. Uh, the other option is to come in with one more plate that might unify it. If you feel like the background's too busy, we could come in with a really transparent gray or some other color to um, give it maybe a little bit more volume. So I think I might do that. I'm going to pause for now, and then I, I think I'm going to consider whether to add a really transparent kind of a violet gray, mostly transparent base, but it'd be nice to give a little bit more volume to each of the balloons. Uh, the yellow one feels pretty flat to me. I didn't leave very much residue on the blue plate or the red plate to give it much volume, so I think I'm going to go back in and maybe add a shadow plate that can give this red balloon a little bit more volume and flesh out the other ones a little bit more too. I might leave the flag uh, a little bit soft focus so it stays back a little bit behind the balloons and try to pop the balloons out in front of the, um, the flag a little bit. It's, it feels uh, kind of flat to me still, but that'll be the next step. So I'll keep my sketch where it is. I'll do a little bit of cleanup, I think, and then I'll develop one more plate that um, has a transparent value, and I'll show you how that works out.